Are you tired or did you rest? Are you fine? Okay. Now hug your neighbor. Amen. Karibuni kwa nyumba ya Mungu. Welcome to the Father's house. Murakoze cyane. Thank you very much. Eh, turasoma mu gitabo cya Yeshua. We are reading in the book of Joshua. Ibice ni bine. We are reading from chapter 4. Verse 9. Then Joshua set up 12 stones in the midst of the Jordan in the place where the feet of the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant stood, and they are there to this day. Verse 19 to verse 24. Aban baza mukaba vumuri rodani kumusi wachumini ukwezi kuambere wagandi ka igirugali murugabano guiriko muruhande gubura sirazuba. Yama wechumina wiri ba kwe muri rodani yosoe a shingi girugali. Mazabira bistereti aban abanyu ugo baza baza baze mugiekiza zabati ayama buyena iki. Amen. Now the people came up from the Jordan on the 10th day of the first month, and they camped in Gilgal on the east border of Jericho. And those 12 stones in which they took out of the Jordan, Joshua set up in Gilgal. Then he spoke to the children of Israel, saying, When your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What are these stones? Then you shall let your children know, saying, Israel crossed this Jordan on dry land. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan before you until you had crossed over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up before us until we had crossed over, that all the peoples of the earth may know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty that you may fear the Lord your God forever. <laughs> We thank God for the past few weeks and days that we've been studying about the 12 stones. Those who were here for the first and second services, I tried to share on the meaning of the 12 stones in Gilgal because I had previously taken time to talk about the 12 stones in the Jordan and I talked about the 12 stones of Gilgal, the prophetic significance and what they meant in the time to come. You will bear with me because in this evening service, I do not want to go back to what I taught in the first and the second services. I am just going to wrap up this series of the 12 stones and finish it off. I'll summarize briefly, but we are not going to go back to what I taught in the morning. Uh, Thank you, 
mwakunyu ni gitunguru kiza I do not I do not want you to think that I am just going to avoid teaching you what I told to the people in the first and the second services. Actually, I'm going to give you better than I did in the first and second services. I am going to spice this sermon for you. Eh, muribuka ko tuvuga kuri amabuye 12 twavuze ibintu bitandatu cyakarindwi nicyo tutavuze aho namwe ari bwo buzima bwo kuyoborwa n'umwuka wera. Remember that when we talked about the 12 stones of the Jordan, we talked about six lessons, and there was one lesson, which is the seventh that we hadn't touched, which is about being led by the Spirit. The place where Jesus took the decision to be led by the Spirit, or the place that he received the Spirit and was led to the wilderness, he was in the Jordan. That place is the Jordan. Jesus had spent the first 30 years of his life being led by his parents. They directed every move. They directed everything that he did. But from the moment he was baptized, from the moment he received the Holy Spirit, he changed the course of his life and started to be led by the Spirit in all that he did. You remember that he had previously stayed in the temple when he was very young and the mother came and said, what have you stayed here doing? They took him from the temple and they took him home. Now when Jesus reached the Jordan, everything changed. The priority now of his life was to be led by the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says that as many as are led by the Holy Spirit are those who are the children of God. Children of God. Children of God are those who are led by the Holy Spirit. In other words, they are led according to the mind, the will, and the desire of God. Let me give an example. The person who made this podium in their mind they made it for conferences and teachings. Now if you found this podium in the wrong place or maybe for example you find it in a bedroom somewhere it's still the podium but it's not fulfilling the purpose that it was designed to fulfill. If you found this podium in a bar Niko by the oko. counters, Niko. it is still a podium. It's still there. But it's not fulfilling the purpose of its creator. So to be led by the Spirit simply means to be led according to the will and the desire of the Creator, the purpose for which you were made. Now today we have people who are living their lives in the wrong places, doing the wrong things, not fulfilling their designed purpose. There are three spirits that govern man. Or three spirits that could be over you. The first, it is the spirit of Satan. The spirit of Satan can lead someone. 
do this for me. Baha. Be here. La raha. Sleep here. Fugibi. Speak this. Koribi. Do this. We have such people. The second spirit it is the man spirit or the human spirit. The human spirit follows emotions. It is following the state of your emotions whether you are happy or sad. So if you are happy, you want everyone to dance in the whole night. You wake them up and say, let's dance, wake up. And if you are sad, you want everything switched off, you don't want noise. People follow the state of your emotions. That's a human spirit. The human spirit can tell you today, do not go to town. And you don't go to town. Go to this appointment. Don't answer this appointment and you don't do it. That's the human spirit. The third spirit is the spirit of God. The spirit of God can take you from one place to another. In Mark 1, 10, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, led Jesus to the wilderness. It's amazing. Yes, of you, Jesus just got baptized. The heavens opened. A voice was heard saying, this is my beloved son. In Everyone is there. It was enough. Yes, for Jesus to go to Jerusalem hey, and say, ask people. The heavens spoke out loud that I'm a child of God. But that's not what happened. happened. The spirit led him to a place that had no one. The spirit led him to a place that had no food. A place that had no water. In the wilderness. When you are led by the Spirit of God, your wilderness is better than the paradise that your flesh would have led you to. A small house that you live in that has the Spirit of God is much greater than a mansion full of the Spirit of this world. Do we get this? Your great degree without the spirit of God is less than a certificate that has the spirit of God. The human spirit when he works with Satan they are called the spirit of the world. Satan when Satan and the flesh work together, it is known as the world. The spirit of God to work in you and in my life, it has to first kill our flesh. Because there is no way the spirit of God will be seen until your flesh dies. When your flesh dies, Satan has no doorway. Because Satan comes through the flesh. It's as if you have closed the doors and he stays outside. The reason why Satan has access to our lives, it is because our flesh, as dry and as wicked as it is, it welcomes him. Another thing, when you're led by your spirit or your flesh, you will always be a child in the spirit, though you have been saved for so long. Paul 
That's why Paul says that I am speaking to spiritual babes. You are still babies. You should be eating bones in the spirit, but I'm taking you back to milk because that's your stature. That is the seventh lesson of the 12 stones in the Jordan. The Bible tells us that Joshua took 12 stones and built a memorial in the Jordan. He built a memorial of the 12 stones in the Jordan. Then he went to Gilgal and built another memorial of 12 stones. Now this is where it is. Before he built a memorial in Gilgal of 12 stones, he first built a memorial of 12 stones in the Jordan in a place that was hidden and no one could see. Remember that the stones are likened to our lives. The Bible says you are living stones that build a spiritual house. The 12 stones in the Jordan signify your hidden life that is not known by people and the 12 stones in Gilgal also show your life that is evident for the public to see. Everyone has two lives. We all have a public life. We all have a private life. There is a life that the public knows and thinks that's you, but there is another life that only you know. So there are no stones in Gilgal if we don't have stones in the Jordan. And these stones have to be of the same number, 12 stones in the Jordan and 12 stones in Gilgal. What does this mean? The height that you have dug deep that is not known going to the depth should be equal to the height going up that people should see. A bungalow has a short foundation, but a flat has a long foundation. And skyscrapers have deep foundation, very deep foundation. For you to show God's glory out for the public, you should already have a deeper glory in your life, in your private life. There are people who look at other people and they compare themselves and they want to be like other people, but they don't know the depth of the foundation of those people they want to be like. So before you ask to be elevated, before you ask to be famous, you need to ask yourself if you have really dug a deep foundation in the Jordan. <laughs> That's why when you want to know someone really well, you ask them their successes and their failures. You ask them their strengths and their weaknesses. Actually, if the stones in the Jordan the invisible stones in the Jordan, which show our testimony that is not known by people but God, 
agomba kuba kika cyane kuko ni yatanga icerekezo cy'amabuye ari hanze they should be strongly built they should be firm because they give the direction of the public imyaka 33 yesu yagishije mu rwihisho irangana n'imyaka 3 yesu yagaragaye the 30 years that Jesus lived hidden are equal to the 3 years he lived exposed to the Nukumongo public. What does this mean? 10 years of Jesus are equal to 1 year in public. 10 more years of his invisibility are equal to his second year. And other ten years that Jesus was invisible, they are equal to the three years he was visible. Every time the foundation should be dug deep, it should be firm, it should be strong, stronger than what we see for the public as a house. There are people who have short roots in God. And there are those who have deep roots. When both people have problems, those with short roots fall faster than those with deeper roots. Yes, I Matayo, Jesus said this in Matthew 7, 24, 24 to 27. That he who hears my words believes in them and leaves them, puts Ngwa, them in action. They are like a wise man who built his house on a rock. Floods came. Winds came. It rained. It all hit the house. But the house did not fall because it was built on a rock. He who hears what I say and doesn't put it in action is like a foolish man who built a house on sand. He didn't build it on the rock. The floods came, it rained, the winds beat, it all came on the house, and it all collapsed, and its fall was great and terrible. That's the Bible. Let me tell you. When you want to make it or be seen in Gilgal and you haven't built the foundation in the Jordan, when the floods come, the winds beat, and the storms hit you, you fall so fast and terribly. If you have been promoted by the media, it is the same media that will destroy you. But if God promoted you, you will survive the storm of the media. Noah said, He who closes is he who opens. He who lifted you is he who will demote you. Never! You cannot be lifted by God and a carnal person demotes you. But if it is a carnal person who elevated you, of course they will demote you. Do not take pleasure in going up if you haven't, went, if you haven't gone down to dig a foundation. In the book of Ephesians 4, 6 to 7, the Bible says, The Bible says that he who went deep to the belly of the earth is the same one who went high above the heavens. What does this mean? The reason why Jesus went above the heavens, it is because he went to the belly of the earth. 
deep Mene to the da. bottom. My brother, you want a testimony in Gilgal when you don't have one in the Jordan. You're still struggling with some issues. You need to overcome them before you make it in Gilgal. The life of Gilgal is about branding. It's about your image. It's about what people see about you. But the life in Jordan is about the healing of our hearts, the dealing with our hearts. In Gilgal, in Gilgal, we ask what people are saying about us. But in the Jordan, we ask what God is saying about us. The Bible says in the book of Luke 2.52 that Jesus grew up finding favor before men and finding favor before God. This means Jesus was balanced. His favor or his testimony before God and before men was equal. He was the same before God and the same before men in Galilee. In Gilgal, in Gilgal, in Gilgal, to impress your neighbor, are you coming here or down to impress your neighbor? In Gilgal, we impress people, but in the Jordan, we impress God. Amen. Hallelujah. Muriro Dan, do he shima ni chuba hero? In Gilgal, do he shaba no mujish. In the Jordan, we glorify God. In Gilgal, we bless people. In Gilgal, people testify about us. In the Jordan, it is God who testifies about us. In Gilgal, in the Jordan, that's where the voice was heard from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am pleased. This means God testifies about you in the Jordan. But in Gilgal, the Bible says that these stones will be a memorial for the nations and the peoples who will come to see them and say how wonderful it was. Let me say this. When you have a good... When you have a good... When you have a good... When when you have God's testimony in the Jordan, God goes as far as recommending you to the devil, just like he did with Job. He recommends you because he trusts you, because he knows how deep is your foundation. But there are other people that he cannot recommend to the devil because the devil will come and take them for good. Now, when you have built your foundation, when you have built the 12 stones in the Jordan, God is proud to show off with you. <laughs> When you get to Gilgal, uh -huh. When you get to Gilgal, you will build a memorial of 12 stones that you will have taken from the Jordan, which means that everything starts in the Jordan. It's amazing. Amen. Amen. 
ubuzima dufite hari imbere bukomoka mu mana tugomba kumenya origine y'ibyo dufite aho bikomoka it means that the power people see in Gilgal, the testimony, the strength, the skills, and what we do for the people in the public, it definitely comes from the Jordan. It comes from God. Ah, no, 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 no. So let's get this. Diploma. My diploma. Are the stones to show my sons that I studied. <laughs> It means my diploma is proof. My diploma, it is a stone from Jordan to show my children in Gilgal that I am educated, but the wisdom, the knowledge, the intellect, I got it from God. The house I have, the car I own, these are all testimonies, or they are stones to show the children when they ask where we have come from, and the foundation is in the Jordan, the foundation is in God. <laughs> Yoshua, ngoya mabu yechu minabi ribaku yehe. Muri yorodani, Yoshua ya shingi girugari. Ah, amabu ya shingi girugari. Aliki ngomoko ya yoni he. Yorodani. Haba nubwa za kumona hanzu saneza. Aliki ngomoko ya weni mubi hisho muman. Haba nubwa tazi. Haba nubwa tasoba anukiwe. Hey, hallelujah. Hey. The Bible tells me on verse 20, and those 12 stones which they took out of the Jordan, Joshua set up in Gilgal. In other words, their origin by all means was in the Jordan. People will see your life in Gilgal looking all well and shiny, but the source, the origin is in the Jordan. They need to know the origin. This is deep. Two commands dans le jour. It all begins in the Jordan. Tout commence dans le Jordan. It all begins in the Jordan. Eh, ni kimenya ne chanje ni chato miengera harivi. Haga kazi nara shuguritse. Haraba shuguritse inchuri jana gukurusha. Harabi zema mashuri menshi gukurusha. Dabora kazufite ni kajani na mashuri. Some people say, Tout commence dans le jour de Some people show off and say, I have this job because I have connections, because I have people, I am who I am because of so and so. But to be honest, and the truth is, it is all related to the Jordan. It all has a place of invisibility that it came from. You always have to go back to the Jordan. That's where it began. The Bible tells us of a rich man who lived. He had he had so many plantations, fields. Then he built barns for storing the food. This man stored a lot of food. Everything was perfect. And then he sat and said, I am a man. I have cultivated. I have had staff. People who work for me, I have food. Ma you will never be hungry. Rest for you have food. Plenty. My heart be still. You will be strong because you are strong. I am a man. I have made it. I, I am wise. I have storehouses. In this whole town, I am a man. I am awesome. He sat in his chair. Then in the night, God came and told him, I need my life back. 
we warahinzura aho nikurakome ariko nanye nkene yakuka kawe kuko ninjye wakaguha you have built storehouses <laughs> you are great but i need your breath of life it is mine wahunitse ibiryo simbitware warahinze sintwa ari mirima yawe wubasurutoke wa uraruri ntarwo nwa ariko araka nanye nene araguhishemo abantu batari bazi nakuka kanje kihisha imbere muri wowe tibakaze bazi ibiryo baza mazu baza mastoa baza ma ma depo yawe ariko ntibaza kuka kanje kuka kanje we garuka ngo muri iryo joro wa mugabo arapfa yesa aravuga ngo bimari ku muntu kuzuza ibigega nibindi ariko gatakaza ubugingo bwa so this man had built all these things and in the night God came to him and told him I will not take your fields I will not take your plantations I will not destroy your storehouses but I want something that I had kept in you something invisible I want the breath of life in you give it to me back and in the night he died then Jesus said what is the use of gaining the whole world and losing your life brethren Let's be great. It is good. Let's build houses. It is good. Let's study. It is good. Let us be directors and CEOs. Let us be awesome people. It is good. Ayo namabuye ashinzigira ugari ariko inkomoko yayo ni Yorodani. But those are stones in Gilgal which have a foundation and origin in the Jordan. When children look at the memorial and ask, Father, what is the meaning of this memorial? You will have technical, you have physical things to use as you teach them. Physical materials or objects. As teachers, you tell them, son, this stone is for Reuben, this is for Simeon, this is for Benjamin, this is for Naphtali, this is for God. These are all the house of Jacob. But why do we see the memorial stones out in the open? You will tell them, though the stones are out in the open, their origin is in the Jordan. What this means, we didn't go to the water to pick the stones, but we came with God on our journey. He dried up the Jordan and we carried the stones. And the children will ask, what? How did it happen? For the Jordan to dry up. And you will tell them, God went before us. When the priest stood in the water, carrying the ark, which is the glory of God, it parted in two. Father, that God, is he still working? Yes. Just as these stones do not get old, so is God. He never gets old. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He who did it formerly is still doing it now and he will do it for eternity. He who lived with our fathers, he will live with you, our sons, and he will live with your children and your children's children. And you ask father. They asked father. Did you see it with your eyes? But he, yes we did. He, he did it also. When we were crossing the Red Sea. These stones. Show us that it's possible. Every sea before you. Do not fear it. There are witnesses that can show that it can part. The stones in Gilgal are witnesses of God's great works in your life, showing that he will do even greater in your life. 
Wowe. You. Uri bimenyetso. You are a sign. Bigaragaza ko that shows we wakiza umuhoro wa 1994 igicurane ndi kizagutwara ubu haracara ukuboko kw'Imana ku buzima bwawe that shows that if you survived the 1994 genocide you will not die to small diseases today Humura. god will keep you free. ya mana yakurinze abantu baguhiga bukware iracakurinze n'uyu munsi mu nzara mu bukene muki ibyo ni ibimenyetso bigaragaza amabuye 12 mu buzima bwawe ku buzima bwawe ufite assurance yejo hazaza kuko ya mana yakamije inyaji tukura ya mana yakamije erodani that same God that dried the ocean, that dried the sea, will also dry the seas you're facing today. The God who protected you when people were hunting for your life is able to protect you and help you cross even more seas that you find before you. Even amazing is this. The children who ask, Father, I am Abuye. These stones. What did we get that day? And the fathers will say. These stones are teaching. That every journey. That leads you somewhere. There is always a sea before you. The place you want to reach. There is a price to pay. There is a sea that will present itself before you and say you cannot cross. Yet you don't know how to swim. You have, have no boat. Boat. you have no wings to fly over the sea. But these stones will show you that every sea that comes before our lives, God dries it. Every Jordan that comes in our lives, God parts it in two. Another meaning of this stone, my sons, they mean these stones, they mean that life is made up of three things. It is made up of the wilderness. It is made up of water. It is made up of Canaan. Canaan, you will reach there when you've gone through the wilderness, when you've crossed the sea. Every good thing is always at the end. I told you, I, I once walked around a beehive and I was getting honey. I used to do that. We lived in a place that had giant trees where bees would make their hives. And I would collect honey. Now when you reach in a hive, bees, what, what start inside is not the honey itself. You find young ones of bees. And things they're making for young bees. So you you will touch that place and you collect the honey. The more you go deeper, the more they sting you. And we didn't have plastic gloves to wear. So you would use smoke. When you put in smoke, they will flee the smoke and you take the honey. But there are other bees that resist and they sting you. Now the more you go, you will fight even more. You reach the honey, honey mixed with the young bees. And you keep moving. The deeper you go, you find only honey and you collect it. But you're being stung. Now where is the greatest battle? 
There is deeper honey which is meant for the queen. It is jelly honey. It is jelly honey. Jelly honey is only for the queen bee. All bees all bees live for a hundred days. But the queen lives for five years. Why? She eats well. The jelly when people eat it in daily life, they give longevity. They live long. But to get the journey, bees will sting you. The bee commanders sting you. Because it's honey only for the queen. They resist the smoke. And they fight you. That's why God told the Israelites that you're going to a land of honey. You will eat after struggling to get it. It's a land of milk. You don't drink it if you don't rear cows. That's good. Karibu mu maseziran. Ari kumenye ko. Mbere yo kuja mu maseziran. Uwanza kufa mwabo kwa ya farao bigoji. Wava mwabo kwa ya farao bigoji. Uga chamuri mu nyanjitu kura bigoji. Waiva mu. Uga chamubu tayo. Wava mubu tayo. Uga chakuri yoro dan. Uga nguzi njiri kanani. Some people pray and say, God, lead me to your promises where I will drink the milk and eat the honey. Little do you know that for you to leave Egypt and it is hard for Pharaoh to release you, you find. Every promise has an army against the fulfillment of it. Why do we think that it is God who fulfills the promises? It is because we can't fight that battle. It's only God who can fulfill the promises. For you to reach a good thing, you have to fight for it. You have to sweat for it. When you easily achieve things, either you stole them or it's by magic that you got them. And things you still are not lasting. And things done by magic, you pay for them. Even things won by the lottery. It is wasted because you didn't toil for it. But things you toil for, things you suffered for, you value the stones. They show the journey we took. The Red Sea. The wilderness. The Jordan. My son. Know. That your journey. Always has a wilderness. It has a sea. But look back. And say though there is the sea. Though there is the wilderness. The stones tell us that God can dry the sea. This evening, I'm telling you this. If God has called you to lead a house, a home, a job, or any given thing you're leading, you need to understand that the battle is for the Lord. God is not foolish to give you six children and then refuse you the ways and means to raise them. No. no. This is what God tells you. For every level of challenges and problems you face. Look back and look for the marks of God's success or God's presence in your life. Satan does that. 
Let the devil not come to you and tell you that this is fine or this will destroy your life. Tell him I had much more and I overcame it. It's not a final. It's not final. It's the beginning. Every problem, every challenge should be a beginning, not a final. Even I sang this. Sometimes I say this is final. But that's how man is. The reason why God allowed us to have a memorial is that we would always look at it and say it is not final, but God will help me cross this just like he helped me deal with this. Do you have a Jordan before you? God allows you to take other stones from me. The Israelites took 12. If, if we were to take 12 stones for every challenge that we have faced, some of us will be having thousands and thousands of stones in their homes today. But God has been faithful and gracious to us. When you go through difficulties, count the blessings that God gave you in the past. God who allowed you to be born. In that difficult time. And God allowed you to grow. In that hunger of poverty or I, being a refugee somewhere. And God allowed you to build a house. In great difficulties. Will he withhold other things from you? God still has a great plan over your life. He still has a great plan. What I ask you is this. You need to know. That just over there, you will be seen. After having gone through an invisible place, may God help us. Our lives that is invisible, may it be similar to the visible lives we lead. The way we look at, the way we look like during the day, should be the way we look like during the night. That's a great blessing. That's a great blessing. Being the same you in every season. The one we know during hunger is the same one during plenty. People who are not changed by seasons or by friends. But people who are transformed by God and they become better and better. As as you take stones from the Jordan going to Gilgal, I would say have a safe journey. May God bless you. If you may rise and we pray. Oh Jesus. Mana Tushimberea. God, we come before you. We thank you for doing good. Thank you for making us living stones. Your living stones. Your stones. That should manifest you. Your stones. Lord Jesus. Let our lives that, is, that are seen by the people be similar to our lives that are invisible to the public. Build for us build for us a hidden memorial where 
where your word says that the foundation of the Lord is there and he and on it it is written the Lord knows who is. thank you for knowing us day and night thank you for knowing us like your children keep us Lord not to be led by any other spirit but your spirit let us be led by your spirit in our daily lives Teach me your ways. Teach me your spirit. Teach me your will that I may do what you want me to do as I live. I pray a blessing for every person. Build for them. A testimony that is solid. Raise them above everyone else. Raise them raise them only you can do that though winds will blow though it will rain though storms will come they will remain standing I thank you that we stand in you the glory is yours today and for eternity in the name of Jesus Amen Amen Go with the Lord Jesus. If you want to receive Christ, we invite you to come forward and receive Christ. Even those who are following us on radio or TV. If you're following us on social media. Takushima kwa mi urumungere urumungere wa uri shuti uri shuti aje kwa Alleluia. Dagushima mwami Dagushima Urumungere wate Urumungere wate Urishuti Urishuti Yate Alleluia Dagushima God, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for being great. We bring to you those who haven't received you on radio, on social media. Reveal yourself to them. Enter their lives. Be the king and savior of their lives. Change their lives that they may enter your kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And bless you indeed.